Indeed, brothers and sisters, it is good to be here. I'm moving around a little slow, and, but thank God I'm moving. Amen. Not so long ago, I was attempting to change a light fixture and somehow lost my balance. Trying to be a good husband. <laughs> well, that's the last time I'm going to do that. <laughs> Bless his name. I am indeed right happy to be here this afternoon, brothers and sisters. Of course, I admit now I, I was a little warm. Not that Brother Cyril's was called to the pastoral ministry, but when he left, he took three of my best members with him. <laughs> Somehow, I just thought that just wasn't right. <laughs> but the Lord will make a way somehow. I'm not going to prolong your time on this afternoon, brothers and sisters, but very briefly, I'd just like to leave a little thought well with us all that will help us to encourage the heart of this man of God and of this wonderful woman who walks beside him. You know, pastoring, <laughs> for a married individual is a family affair. When you call one, you call the other two. And believe me, it is just as taxing on the one as it is on the other. Let us pray. Magnificent and wonderful, Father. We give glory and honor to the majesty of your name. We thank you, Lord, for all things. For all things come of thee, O Lord. We ask first, forgive us of any sin that may be in our lives. Wash us afresh in the blood of the Lamb. Creating us a clean heart and renewing us a right spirit. And we thank you, Father God, for being just and faithful to forgive. Now we ask that you would send that anointing, Lord, that makes preaching easy. We bind every foul spirit and every hindering demon, everything that would exalt itself against the knowledge of you and the glory and power of your word. So speak, Lord, and through these dusty lips of clay. And God, we ask, most of all, that you would touch the heart of the one who stands near his hell. We put it all in your hands, and we declare in Jesus' name that it is so. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, there are two brief places that I would like to visit from the Holy Writ on today. Perhaps you might like just to jot it down. And then, at your time of personal Bible study, you could give greater attention to these words of Scripture. From the Gospel as recorded in the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 33, I'd like to read verses 7 through 9. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Coach Chapel. Uh, therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to 
warn the wicked man from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. And from the gospel as recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, I'd like to lift for you from verse 16. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. If you don't mind, look that away towards our pastor and his companion. And say with me, woe unto you. If you preach not the gospel. I want to say good afternoon to Mother Dot. She's the chairperson of our mother board and a great woman of God. And I'm glad she didn't go. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is indeed good to be here on this day of celebration uh, with the membership of the Coach Chapel Free Will Baptist Church. You know, it is indeed a good thing that you have set aside this time to honor the man of God and the graceful woman who walks beside him. As they lead you from faith to faith and from glory to glory. You know, there are many churches that take for granted the leadership that the Lord has blessed to lead them. And you know, for the life of me, y'all, I can't understand why. I mean, after all, when you consider what your servant leader has sacrificed, how they have labored, how they have given of themselves. How could you not be grateful to God Jesus. and to them for all that they have done? And, and don't forget for one moment, Coach Chapel, that God himself isn't pleased with your pastoral celebration. That's why he said, let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Right. Especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. Mm -hmm. Or he said, give a prophet a cold cup of water in the name of a prophet. Mm -hmm. And you shall reap a prophet's reward. Now, everybody may not be a Bible scholar, but to all of you who have ever worked a 40-hour week, the Bible says the laborer is worthy of his hire. Can I get an amen? Amen. You know, brothers and sisters, I met your pastor some uh, 25, 26 years ago over at the chapel. Now, in a real sense, uh, we have grown up together in ministry. Brothers and sisters, my assignment was to break the bread of life and to then flee, feed the flock of God. Now, 26 years later, we are both standing on the wall. You know, children, a lot of things have transpired uh, during the passing of that time. Mm -hmm. We've seen a uh, cell phone industry 
reach amazing heights. We have witnessed electric cars with the ability to drive themselves. Drones that will deliver packages right to your front door. Virtual classrooms for the education of our children. Drive through church services, a worldwide pandemic, and the icing on the cake, y'all. A black president in the over office. And you know what? The more things change, the more things stay the same. The Bible says, the thing that hath been is the thing that shall be done. And there is nothing new Amen. under the Amen. sun. Amen. Real pastor, it is your time now to carry the torch to the next generation. Amen. Amen. There is still a great need for the gospel to be preached. Amen. Just think, the world is now at the height of civilization. Every day new discoveries Oh, bless his name, are being made uh, to make faster, easier, and better ways of living life's everyday functions. Now, you would think that with all its advancements, mankind would have come to realize that what it really needs is more love among all mankind. Genuine love, brothers and sisters, among all men would solve all of its problems. But that is not the case. And it does not appear to be the goal or aim of civilization in this present hour. Instead, men are becoming more and more hedonistic or pleasure-seeking. You know, let it all hang out. Yeah. Let the good times roll. Drop it like it's hot. Do it till you can't do it no more. Brothers and sisters, that's what's going on. And still, there are wars and rumors of wars. Men are becoming heady and hot-minded. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. They are proud. Boasters, blasphemers, covetous, disobedient, unthankful and unholy, and without natural affection. False accusers and despisers of those that are good. Our uh, brothers and sisters, it is amazing that we read the prophetic utterance of the Holy Writ. Then we watch as it unfolds right in front of our very eyes. And still, it seems that we don't take heed. Oh, it seems that the world continues on its path to destruction. Oh, with all of the fancy gizmos, doodads, and gadgets. The technology may be new and improved. But let me tell you something. It's the same old system of the world that leads men down the road of no return. Amen. And unless Jesus steps in Jesus. to save their souls Lord, in hell, Amen. they will lift up their eyes. Lord, oh, bless his name. I come by today to say thank God for Jesus. Jesus who is still drawing men by the power of the Holy Ghost. He is the light of the world. And brothers and sisters, his chosen method of drawing men unto himself is the preaching of the gospel. Oh, bless his name. Brothers and sisters, the Bible declares that it is by the foolishness of preaching all that men's souls shall be saved. Well, brother pastor, it is necessary that men hear the word, that it might fall on the fallow ground.
sound of the heart. Oh, bless his name. It is the same word that was in the beginning with God and was God and is God. For the Bible says that he and his word are one. Oh, bless his name. Y'all, it is the same word that became flesh and came down and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The same word, y'all, that suffered, bled, and died all for your sins and mine. Yeah, for the lies I told, for the stuff I stole, for the dope I used, yeah, the wine I drink. Jesus died. Hallelujah! Jesus died for me. Yeah, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is the living word. I'm almost finished, y'all. Oh, let me tell you something. That word will do what he set out to do, and it cannot return to him void. And dying men and women, they need to hear of the salvation that is in his name alone. All oh, for the book says, there is none other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Oh, let me tell you something. As I'm on my way to my seat, yeah, Biden and Harris can't do it. Governor Cooper can't do it. Lord knows Donald Trump couldn't do it. And neither can Pastor Sutton or Pastor Sirs. Oh, bless his name. It is Jesus. Jesus alone who is the perfect sacrifice for sin. Our brothers and sisters, they, the sick, the tired and the curdy, the broken, battered and abused, the lost who don't know it and the lost that do, they need only to call on that name. Oh, bless his name. Ah, oh, but bro, pastor, the Bible says, how can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him? in whom they have not heard, and how shall they hear without a preacher? Well, bro, pastor, I stopped by this afternoon. Yeah, they talk to everybody up in here, and I'm glad that everyone is listening. I've come to remind us all that a preacher, oh, bless his name, is a chosen vessel, chosen by God to proclaim his holy word to the world. And let me give you all some good free advice. Leave the pastor alone. Let him do what God has called him to do. Now if the pastor would get out of line, get out of God's will, you let God deal with them. For the Bible still says touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Our brothers and sisters, he has been chosen and anointed to complete his assignment. Anointed means God on flesh, empowering flesh to do what it could not otherwise do. Oh, bless his name. And his primary function, y'all, his primary function is not to visit the sick. Yeah, not to come by your house and pat you on your head. Not to listen at you tell your endless stories about what's going on wrong. His brief primary responsibility is to preach the gospel. Thank you, Lord God. I feel like preaching myself. The Bible says Let's us know that preaching is the most important thing in the universe. Unlike the teacher, the doctor, the lawyer, the farmer, the mechanic, the cook, or the judge, the preacher is the only assignment with eternal consequences. Oh, bless his 
name. And brothers and sisters, the Father has therefore placed great significance on the preaching of the gospel. It is his chosen method for the confession of the heart of all they who are lost that they might be saved. It is so important that the Bible says unto the preacher, woe unto you if you preach not the gospel. God loves them so much that he doesn't want any of them to perish. That's why he said to you preacher, if I give you a word to tell to my people and they don't hear you, then die in their sins, their blood. Oh, bless his name because you didn't tell them their blood because you wouldn't preach the gospel. Their blood shall be upon your hands. Oh, bless his name. Ah, but if you stand flat footed, if you tell them what doth save the Lord, and then they die in their iniquity, yeah, they will die, but your hands will be free. Oh, bless his name. My brother, pastor, preach and tell them the whole, whole story. Oh, bless his name. Brother Pastor, let me say, don't be fooled by trying to build a crowd, preach the gospel, and build a church. Oh, bless his name. Now you can easily, yeah, preach that watered down, cotton candy kind of a gospel that doesn't require anything of your congregation. You can tell them they are all right. Anything goes. And everybody's going to heaven anyhow. Oh, bless his name. But if you're going to preach, tell them the truth. You ought to feel the burden of the gospel every time you ascend up into this lofty place. You ought to preach hell hot and heaven happy. Preach hell, fire, and brimstone right beside the pearly gates. Now many folk, they want to hear about penthouses. Bling, bling. They want Gucci, Mercedes Benz. They want Bentleys and Cadillacs. But you make sure that they know what the Bible says. See ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Preach pastor. Preach man shall not lay with another man. Preach pastor. Women shall not turn away from the use of natural affection. Preach pastor. That marriage is the only bed that is undefiled. Preach, pastor, till the liars stop lying, till the thief stop stealing. Preach, pastor, till the saints stop playing the lottery and the good church folk stop paying their tithes. Preach, pastor, cry loud and stand tall and some glad morning when this life is over you gonna hear the father say Alfonso Rosemary come on home and sit down and rest a little while I gotta close y'all I gotta take my seat oh, but I wanna say stand beside him. Lift up his arms and give him your amen. Say, preach, pastor. When it hurt your feet, ball up your toes. Say, preach, pastor. Thank you, Lord God. And some glad morning when your day 
is done. You hear him say, come on in, you blessed of my father. You've done well. Now you too sit down and rest a little while. Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. Woo! God bless you, man of God.